Hello, I'm Felix from GK Software. And today we're making an interview with a local about the first project. Hello. Hi. Thank you for taking time for this interview. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself first? I'm Dino. I'm lecturing here at Bournemouth University. And it's a pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you. Okay, first question. What do you think about the Horizon 2020 research program? What do I think about the Horizon 2020 research program? When, first of all, uh, having worked within an academic environment for quite a bit now, I know what it is. Uh, I know that it's uh, a major framework within the EU, uh, research distribution network. Uh, I think they're working with around 80 billion euros, around three research clusters. Um, pure science, is it? industrial excellence and uh, societal challenges. So my view of it would be around societal challenges uh, within the humanities. So I think it's very important. I think it's something that the EU should be proud of in principle. But I also think that there's a lot to be done around making it easier for all potential applicants. For example, now you have quite a bit of academic infrastructure around academic applications and so forth, but uh, I've worked with third sector partners who find it very hard to plow through the bureaucracy. So I think that sort of sums up what I believe about it. It's very important, but things need to be made um, more easily accessible and more streamlined, I suppose. So that it is not restricted to an academic sector, yeah, but more open to... Not only that, but even within academia. Sometimes you have an idea, um, and from the purely sort of cognitive, curiosity-based, intellectual engagement level of that idea to, the, to submitting the application, there are so many in-between layers and filters that are not always in the interest of the idea, but rather in the interest of all the logistics and their discourse and the rhetoric around building a grant. And to a certain extent that's inevitable, but I think that efforts should be made to uh, streamline the process and to focus on the idea, on the intellectual clarity, quality, originality of the idea and so forth. I mean, sometimes you have instruction manuals for the instruction manual for the grant. I mean, surely we can do something about that. Okay, all right. So, what is your opinion on Industry 4.0? Industry 4.0, well, what is Industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0? We'd have to talk about, we have to start somewhere. And um, my own background is sort of in digital studies, media studies, there's a lot of talk around Web 2.0, Web 3.0, 4.0, and I'm, sometimes I get a bit skeptical uh, around this designation. Uh, because it can be a little bit arbitrary. We were talking recently about Tesla, right? Tesla is a, a, as an auto manufacturer, um, especially if you look at how they integrate the electronics. Someone was talking about the symphony of Tesla electronics. They have everything integrated, especially for the Model 3. We have these uh, boards made by NVIDIA, which are completely revolutionary. They blow everyone out of the water, right? So they would be somewhere industry 5.0, right? But at the same time, they struggle with panel adjustment and sort of stuff that Detroit has figured out for many years. So where are they? Are they in this in-between space between three or four or five? So I think it's, uh, it's, it's often um, the case of looking deeper and understanding these designations and making adjust adjustments around them rather than just saying, oh, I'm working within this paradigm and it sounds nice and you should give me money for it. So it's quite unclear for you where, where we are standing right now. It is a bit unclear. I mean, it's not unclear, but it's unclear where we draw the line between the industries, okay? Um, mostly when I think about this designation, I'm thinking about automation, I'm thinking about AI, and I'm thinking about some sort of integration, mm. right? And I, I suppose this is where you guys are also, uh, you know, positioning yourself. Where do you think virtual factories can be used? 
what are virtual factories to begin with? So um, my idea of virtual factories might not correspond with what they really are. So when you say virtual factories, I'm thinking of some sort of simulated factory, something that possesses no physicality to it. And I'm thinking that already they are using some sort of virtual factory within the auto manufacturing business. I have an engineer friend, Jaguar, who, whose job is just this. So they simulate everything before they give it to the robot, so they see where the errors are. So I imagine they're already using it for some time in auto manufacturing. And as they use it there, I suppose you could extrapolate and use it in more types of processes so that you know, you cut back on waste, for example, right? You run a lot of simulations and say, okay, this is sort of the finished product. We can run it through the physical real world. I'm also thinking about 3D printing, for example, right? A virtual factory 3D printing, um, somehow they are connected. Uh, you could run programs on some sort of virtual factory and then instead of producing uh, an actual manufacturing line, you can produce some line of code that you give me, you know, you give to some 3D printer in my home and I use it, right? Uh, virtual factory, so yeah, that, that's sort of what comes to mind. You were talking about the um, simulated product. Yeah. Have you heard of digital twin? Digital twin. Yeah, like when you manufacture when you manufacture something, you have a corresponding digital product which is called a digital twin. Yes. And, and you they also have it. the physical product. Yeah. Right? Okay. You can use it to forecast um, the defects, uh, yeah. for example. Yeah. Right. Well, this comes to mind. Uh, this brings to mind another sort of image. So you know IKEA. IKEA. Yeah. Uh, they have these glass um, displays where they show a machine pushing on a pillow or something, right? So that's sort of a physical um, process by which they try to figure out whether that's good quality or not. Whereas a digital twin would be exactly the same thing, written in code somewhere and executed by a protocol, and you would see it on a screen. Exactly. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Where do you see the chances and risks for virtual factories? Well, the chances, well, advantages more likely, I think, gravitate around sustainability and waste, right? You don't have to go through many iterations uh, of products that you can't use and then you have to throw away or recycle or, or something, right? So if you can run everything digitally, and sort of make sure that when you do print it or when you do produce it, it's really good, then definitely that's an advantage. Uh, I, I'm, I would embrace that. Um, disadvantages would feed into, you know, <laughs> human nature essentially, hacking, viruses. If we integrate everything, and I, would, I can even imagine that we use AI to sort of figure everything out, and have almost humanless presences throughout, uh, then viruses can wreak havoc. You know, they can disrupt all factories, or they can even be quite clever viruses. They can just tweak a little bit of detail, like you were saying, in a in a brake pad or in a in a ECU uh, unit. And if they just tweak something that relates, for example, to the combination of oxygen and air and stuff in an internal combustion engine. You know, Bosch, for example, I know they run extremely minute simulations around the ACUs. Now, if we if we let programs do that and digital twins become self self possessed uh, designers and someone hacks them, and I hack the ECU, I can just explode the infrastructure, literally, right? So this is a risk. So you fear that um, with virtual factories, our products get vulnerable and our manufacturing lines, and in the end, there's a risk that we get like an infected product. Definitely. Wow, okay. Is, is that not, is that, do you think that makes sense? That can definitely make sense, so, yes. Um, what is your personal view on the first project? First project? Um, the first project is um, one project within the H2020 horizon uh, research program, and we are researching on the um, field of virtual factories. 
Well, uh, you know, just based on what you guys have been telling me and our interactions over the past days, I think uh, it's something worthwhile, right? It's worth looking into these questions. But I think that you are also in an advantageous position within academia, not only, although you also are embedded in industry, but it's this collaboration which can be fruitful. So I would hope that you, you get the reflexivity and the critical thinking from academia and, and apply it within industry. So not just, uh, you know, develop a protocol or a code and then, you know, use it for whatever uh, industrial reason or profit, you know. Think about these questions around uh, ethics, yeah. It's not all, it's not just about vulnerable products, but it's also about the role of the human in all of production, the role of, uh, you know, even the role of emotion. All of these things are interesting and fascinating from a cognitive point of view, but they can also be alienated from our very nature, from our emotional nature, right? Because these are machines. So I would really like, at least to hope, uh, that, that uh, scientists consider these mm -hmm. aspects. Yeah. Okay, then thank you very, very much for taking part in this interview. And You're very welcome. <laughs>